All right, y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. And today we're kicking off what so many people have been asking for, 308 Winchester, the very first 308 Winchester ammo test on this channel. And we're kicking it off with a bang. I've got all three Federal Fusion loads in 308 Winchester, 150, 165, and 180 grain. We're gonna be putting them all head to head against each other. Let's go shoot the stuff and see how it does. And here are those boxes for the 308 Winchester Federal Fusion loads, the 150, 165, and 180 grain. First thing I wanna point out is there is a deer icon on all three of the boxes. So that is sort of the intended game species or game size for this ammo, at least as per the manufacturer. Let's flip it around to the back. And I'm not gonna show you the back of every single box because it's all just the same information. And there's your promo information. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. It's just talking about the fusion bullet. What we will go over though is the velocity because that is different for every bullet weight. So for the 150 grain, we're looking at 28, 20 feet per second. For the 165 grain, we're looking at 2,700 feet per second. And for the 180 grain, we're looking at 2,600 feet per second. It'll be interesting to see how close we get to those velocities from my 22-inch barreled Ruger American. Let's go ahead and pop one of these boxes open to take a look at the ammo. I'm not going to open up all of them and show you all of them. They look exactly identical as taken out of the packaging. You can't really tell the difference between the 150, 65, and 180 just by looking at it. And there it is, just a little exposed lead tip bonded soft point. Let's go shoot them and see how they do. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22 inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are those velocities for the 150 grain Federal Fusion load out of the 308. We had a min of 2817, a max of 2843 for an average of 2830. And I'm just leaving the decimal off for now. We'll talk about it in depth more later. I wanna point out that spread though, only 25.9 feet per second. That's pretty tight for factory ammo. And here are the velocities for the 165 grain fusion load, a min of 26.53, max of 26.75 for an average of 26.67, and once again, a very tight spread of only 22 feet per second. And here are the 180 grain fusion velocities, min of 26.12, max of 26.20 for an average of 26.16 for an incredibly tight spread of only 7.7 feet per second. This seems to be some pretty precisely loaded factory ammo. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting both the 150 and 165 grain Federal Fusions out of the 308. I'll do the 180s here in a second. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the 150s. I did capture all three bullets for you guys. Penetration was extremely consistent. There's all three bullets right there. They did change their sort of point of direction when they stop. They're not facing completely forward. Not super unusual for Federal Fusion because they expand so much. And I've come around to the other side so we can see them a little bit better. We've got one, two, and then the third one is right there. And it looks like our penetration is gonna be, I'll give it 18 and 18 and then 18 and a half for that third bullet. Coming on over to the first block, we can take a look at the wound tracks. And it looks like the wound tracks really start to open up at about the two inch mark open up really good and then they start to taper off at about the nine inch mark. 
and there's one, two, and then the third one is underneath of it. So pretty decent wound track. I wouldn't want to get hit by that, that's for sure. And then coming on over to look at the 165s, same story on penetration, very, very consistent. But we did get a little bit deeper with these 165s. And we'll call it 21, that one's kissing 21 and a half inches. This one's right at 21 and a half. And then this one is at 22 inches. So they did kind of what you think they would. The heavier bullets did go a little bit deeper. And then coming over to the first block to look at the wound tracks of the 165s, it's probably pretty tough to tell on the video here, but the wound tracks from the 165s are a bit bigger than the 150s. They start opening up at about the one and a half inch mark, come on back and taper off. It takes a little bit longer for them to start tapering off. About the 12 inch mark, they start to taper off. The wound tracks themselves are a little bit wider. It's tough to tell, but I can see it here. These are some nasty looking boys. And we'll go ahead and dig these out and take a look after I fire the 180s. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Federal Fusion 180 grain load out of the 308. And then right here, I've got something else coming up in another video. Very soon but right now we're going to talk about this one and we did capture all three bullets penetration was very consistent just like the 150s and 165s it looks like we got very very large expansion just like the 150s and 165s as well and penetration wise we've got one at about 21 inches and the other two are at exactly the same depth pretty much i'm going to call that 22 and a half inches so if memory serves it was a few minutes ago now but i think this is about the same as the 165 grain load it might be a little bit deeper and coming on back to the first block very rapid expansion big nasty wound cavities you can see all three wound cavities nice and independent i tried to hit the block at slightly different points with each shot so we can look at all the different wound tracks which is tougher than it might sound and it looks like we got very rapid expansion starting at about the two inch mark coming on back. It peaks about five inches in, starts to taper off just a hair. And then by about the 10 inch mark, it's about done. And then it just keeps penetrating deep. And here's a view from the other side. All three wound tracks basically mirror each other nearly perfectly as far as I can tell. This is one nasty load, just like the other two weights. So I'm going to go ahead and dig these guys out, and we'll take a look at all three bullet weights at the same time. All right, y'all. So we have dug all nine of those Federal Fusion bullets out of the ballistics gel. Let's go ahead and go over all of the metrics. First, we'll go over weight retention. We've got nine to get through, so I'm just going to hit the weights real quick. For the 150 grain bullets, we saw 141, 143, and 146 grains, respectively, for an average of 143 grains retained weight. Weight. That's 96% weight retention. Moving down one row, we've got the 165s. We saw 157, 160, and 162 grains retained weight for an average of 160 grains, and that's 97% weight retention. So we're still right there in that ballpark. Down on the bottom row are the 180s. We saw 171, 172, and 175 grains for an average of 173 grains retained weight. And again, 96%. So as far as weight retention is concerned, all three bullet weights were right there within 1% of each other way up there close to 100% weight retention, absolutely phenomenal weight retention across the board. And then on to expansion. Again, we'll just hit all the numbers. For the 150s, 0.73 inches, 0.79 inches, and 0.83 inches for an average of 0.78 inches expanded diameter. And that works out to 2.5x expansion, way, way up there. I like to see it. For the 165s, we saw 0.72 inches, 0.72 inches again, and 0.74 inches, so very consistent for an average of 0.73 inches expanded diameter, and that works out to 2.4x expansion, so again, way up there. And looking at the photo here, all of the bullets look very, very similar, and I do want to point out that expansion was pretty uniform around the entire circumference of the bullet. It's not just a shard sticking off here or there. These things expanded very, very well. Moving on down to the 180s, we saw 0.75 inches, 0.77, and 0.78 inches for an average of 0.77 inches expanded diameter. And that works out once again to 2.5x expansion. So very consistent expansion across the board for all three bullet weights of this 308 Winchester Federal Fusion. Phenomenal performance expansion wise. And now on to velocity. We're going to hit the 150s first. High velocity was 2844. Our low was 2818 for an average of 2831. 
versus the factory build velocity of 2,820 feet per second. So we actually came in faster on average than the factory build velocity. That's pretty rare, but we do see it from time to time. We came in 11 feet per second faster on average. Phenomenal performance velocity wise from the 150 grain load. Moving on to the 165s, our high velocity was 2676, our low 2654 for an average of 2668 versus the factory build velocity of 2700 feet per second. So we did come in slow here, but not too slow, only 32 feet per second slow on average. Hey, I'll deal with that all day long. I've seen a lot worse. That's pretty close to factory build velocity. And then finally onto the 180s, our high velocity was 2620, our low 2613 for an average of 2616 versus the factory build velocity of 2600 feet per second. So just like the 150s, the 180s actually exceeded their factory build velocity by 16 feet per second on average. Phenomenal performance. These things are loaded right the way they should be. And keep in mind, I'm shooting these from a 22 inch barrel, not 24 inches, not some sort of weird 26 inch target pressure barrel like some manufacturers like to use. This is a real world 22 inch hunting length barrel and we are either right at or exceeding factory build velocity phenomenal. And now on to penetration. And this is really what I've been looking forward to with these three loads, because all in all, the performance of all three different bullet weights have, have mirrored each other very well. Our weight retention, the percentage is basically the same between all three weights. Expansion wise, they're all right there in the same ballpark. But this is where I would expect the different bullet weights to perform differently, and that's exactly what we saw happen. For the 150 grain load, our penetration was 18 inches, 18 inches, and 18 and a half inches. For an average of around 18 inches of penetration, extremely consistent. Just a hair short of that 20 inch mark I like to see for medium game hunting ammo, but I mean, white tailed deer ain't that big. This load would definitely do it for you. Moving on to the 165s, we get a little bit more penetration, which is what I would expect from the same bullet, just a little bit heavier, and that's exactly what we saw. 21 and a half inches, 21 and a half inches, and 22 inches, very tight spread there for an average of about 21 and a half inches, a little bit more with that 22 inches up top. Excellent penetration there. Moving on to the 180s, we get just a hair more, almost the same as the 165s, but we saw 21 inches, 22 and a half, and 22 and a half for an average of about 22 inches of penetration. So about a half inch more than the 165s on average. And I really like to see that it's the same bullet, just different weights. And as you go up in weight, you get a little bit more penetration. I, phenomenal. And we'll hit kinetic energy real quick with 150 grain bullet going on average 2,831 feet per second. We're looking at 2,669 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. For the 165 grain bullet going on average 2,668 feet per second, that works out to 2,607 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. And for the 180 grain bullet, 2,616 feet per second, we're looking at 2,735 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. So they're all right there in about the same ballpark. They're within about, I don't know, 130 foot-pounds of energy of each other. And real quick, I'm gonna throw something in here that I've never done before. This is the very first video where I'm including a new metric. Brand new metric, I'm really excited to do this. I wish I'd done this from the very start. Unfortunately, I didn't, but here we are. And what we're gonna be talking about real quick is impact velocity. So the velocity that the bullet is going all the way down there at 100 yards when it actually hits the ballistics gel. Now, the way that I got this is through a mathematical calculation. It's based off of factory provided ballistics. So this is an estimate, but it should be very, very close to how fast the bullet is actually going at 100 yards, very close, but it is just an estimate. So with a 150 grain bullet, at the muzzle, we're looking at 2831 on average. At impact, 100 yards down range, we're looking at 2,633 feet per second. That's about the impact velocity at 100 yards. For the 165 grain bullet, the impact velocity is gonna be about 2,481 feet per second. And then for the 180 grain bullet, impact velocity is gonna be about 2,433 feet per second down there at 100 yards. Just another thing to think about, no. All right, so it's time for my final thoughts on all three of these Federal Fusion loads for 308 Winchester. Overall, I think the performance was absolutely exceptional. 
Weight retention was the same for all three, at least in terms of a percentage of original weight. Expansion was basically identical. Big expansion, great weight retention. The only real difference is being, of course, velocity because the bullet weights are different. And then penetration, which I liked seeing that. The heavier bullet did go a little bit deeper. The lighter ones were a little bit shallower. Now, the range there, the gap between, say, the 150s and 180s, wasn't really that much. It was only a four inch difference. And now let's move into what would I use this ammo for? If it were me, I would, and I wanted to use Federal Fusion and my 308 Winchester as my hunting ammo, and I think it would be an excellent choice. I would just use the bullet weight that shoots the best out of my rifle. I'm not gonna use the 180s or the 150s because one penetrates a little bit more or less than the other. They're all so similar. I'm gonna use the one my rifle just likes the best because even the deepest penetrating load, the 180, isn't super deep. So if I'm going out after, you know, some bigger, bigger game like elk, grizzly bear, I don't know, you know, the higher end of what you would hunt with a 308 Winchester, I'd probably actually use a different ammo altogether, something that does give me a bit more penetration. And I would relegate these Federal Fusions more to your traditional medium game, you know, white-tailed deer, black bear, of course, wild hogs, stuff like that. And I would just use the bullet weight that my rifle shoots the best. And I think you can't go wrong there. All in all, I think these loads performed absolutely exceptional off the charts. We even saw some velocities over factory spec. Once again, Federal Fusion just absolutely dominates. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.